our university and the college campuses risk becoming islands of intolerance? University campuses must be very careful of becoming in-your-face attitudes at commencements. The American Religious Town Hall meeting is now in session. Welcome, friends, to the American Religious Town Hall Meeting, where the discussion of religious, political, and social issues is meant to promote the cause of religious freedom and to help us better understand each other. And now, here's your host and moderator, Pastor Jerry Lutz. Thank you very much, Mark, and uh, I too would like to welcome you to another program of the American Religious Town Hall Meeting. We're glad you've joined us, especially if this is the first time you've tuned in. If you're watching us via the Internet, Glad to have you here as well. Tell your friends. Before we get started with today's discussion, I'd like for our panelists to introduce themselves, and we'll begin with the gentleman that sits to my right. I'm Bishop Michael Olson, and I am the Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Fort Worth, Texas. My name is Mel Robeck. I'm an ordained minister with the Assemblies of God. I serve the church at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California, where I am professor of church history and ecumenics. I'm Canon John Peterson. I'm the president of the International Society, the Compass Show Society, that supports the global ministry of the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Anglican Communion. Uh, my name is Bert Beach, and uh, I'm an ordained minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I live uh, five miles uh, from the world headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland, of our church, and uh, I, though retired, still called in for consultation. My name is Othel H. Lakey. I'm a bishop in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. I'm retired and live in Buford, Georgia. Hi, I'm Carl Trovall. I'm dean of the College of Liberal Arts at Concordia University in Austin, Texas, which is affiliated with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Well, as you can see, we have a great panel assembled here today. I'm very glad you could take time from your busy schedules to be here. And I think you're going to find today's discussion a rather interesting one, having to do with commencement exercises. Commencement services at American colleges and universities are important events. Older viewers, including panelists on this program, <clears throat> can well remember the seriousness and even pomp of their own college seminary or university commencement. In recent years, such events have become more noisy and at times more boisterous, but still memorable events. One thing that has happened, it seems, with increasing frequency is controversy about the choice of commencement speakers. Well-known and important respected public figures have encountered opposition from irate faculty members and or students who are opposed to their political or socio-religious ideas or business practices. As a result, for example, past secretaries of state and the head of the International Monetary Fund have declined invitations originally accepted, stating they did not want to be part of campus commencement detraction. Other speakers have been disinvited. Some say that invited speakers should not give in, so to speak, but stand their ground. What has happened to the venerable concept that commencement is a happy and non-controversial occasion on which a person of distinction and experience offers words of wisdom and hopefully inspiration to the young graduates? It would seem that commencement talks have now become or seem to be exercises in political correctness. Today I'd like our panelists to tackle this particular issue and answer these three questions. First, has there been a shift in academia from a place for the free exchange of ideas, old or new, and strong academic freedom to shunning and even excluding divergent ideas? Question two, is it as some feel, almost inevitable that liberal progressive campuses will object to conservative speakers and vice versa at conservative colleges and universities. And finally, do students have the right not to be offended not only by the commencement speech itself, 
but by sociopolitical views they think the speaker may have expressed on other very different occasions. Well, that opens up our discussion today. And to begin, let's go back to those who had our opening statements. And for that, let's go back to Burt Beach. If you'd like to uh, elucidate your opening thought, please. Originally, I thought maybe I would say that uh, our campuses are becoming islands of intolerance, uh, campuses of universities and uh, colleges. I, in my opening <laughs> statement, said it risk becoming islands of intolerance. I think maybe mm. that's more correct. But there is a tendency, it seems to me, at our universities and colleges to uh, emphasize a certain viewpoint, maybe liberal or conservative, whatever it might be, the, 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 the organization that owns the college, the university, uh, maybe the state might be more free. Some church-oriented institutions will, of course, be supportive of the philosophy, the thinking of the church that owns the institution. But I, I am a little bit disturbed by this idea of inviting famous people and then the students object to it or some faculty members become unhappy and uh, then the person doesn't come and says, well, I don't want to come and so on. It seems to me that's not a very good trend. The commencement speech, I would hope, would be a time of bringing together the school, the students that are graduating and get somebody who speaks to them in a kind of a fatherly tone, maybe, to giving some wisdom from his own or her experience, rather than d developing some political or very uh, controversial viewpoint. And, and very often, it's not the speech itself that is in question, but it's uh, the person's background mm. and so forth. And I'm not sure that that's a very good direction in which we're going. More could be said, but I'm sure Othel will have something to say about it. All right, this. and speaking of Othel, you also made an opening remark, and you gave a cautionary note there, so if you could please expand yes, that. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the conversation. Of course, I appreciate uh, Dr. Bird Beach's uh, comment. Um, Commencement is serious business, I should think. Uh, and you correct, Mr. Moderator, in talking about how we, we remember those, uh, mm. those somber, solemn occasion when we accomplished those goals, those academic goals. But commencement is a symbol to me of the university. It's a symbol of something. And uh, when we talk about intolerance in a university, I would be the first to advocate and, and fight for the right of free speech, the right of convert, uh, different ideas, that uh, minds ought to be stretched. We ought to uh, force, uh, uh, require students to embrace, at least understand uh, views or that they may not agree with. All, all, all of that I agree with. However, we're talking about commencement. And the choice of a speaker is a symbol, to some degree, of a, of a political point of view that uh, the university may or may not have. And I think that a university must be very careful that in the commencement it does not take an in-your-face sort of attitude toward students and members of the faculty. Uh, th th that is, uh, it, 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 has to, it has to exemplify the unity that Bert spoke of, and if here is a, a, a person whose background, whose previous comments, whose political stance has, is known to be offensive to some persons, the commencement is not the place. I would argue strongly that in a class, in a seminar, in, in, in some uh, open discussion, yes, uh, the campus ought to be open, but commencement I would be very cautious about bringing in persons whose points of view are so radically disagreeable to certain segments of the community of that given campus. All right, thank you very much. Well, as it happens, we have a couple of representatives from some of our uh, schools of higher education here today. I'd like to turn to them for a few moments. Let's start with Dr. Trovall in, in your context. I don't know that this has ever been a problem for you, but speak in terms of your thoughts and ideas on this matter of disinviting or not inviting or rejecting some speaker because of their views. 
Uh, it has not been a problem, although every time a commencement speaker is announced, I hear some people are happy and some people are grumbling because they wanted something different. I guess everyone has their own images of what a commencement speaker should be. Uh, I, I really like what you had to say, Othel, uh, because the, the commencement is really meant to, I think, to embody and reinforce the deepest values that the university is trying to communicate to the world, which means that it doesn't mean it's all non-controversial. Our last commencement speaker here just last week said, I want, he said, go out into the world and be generous. He said, I want, you know, I hope that you can, can die giving away all of your income. Well, that's not exactly a non-controversial comment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so I hope that there's controversy. Especially for the heirs, by yeah, the way. <laughs> but, but controversy that, that pushes people to the, I think, to the deep values, because the purpose of that commencement speech is to inspire, to advise, to challenge. All of those deep things, and uh, I, I agree with you that the, the university should be a place in the classroom where, yes, there's arguments, there's discussion, critical thinking, challenges. The commencement speech is not that place to have that kind of argument. It's a time to step away from the fray and say, what unifies us as a community? Because in every group in college, you're going to have people who have a variety of different opinions. Now, I, Sometimes I get frustrated because I think that the people who are our politicians are worthy of tremendous respect, even though I may have profound disagreements with their beliefs or their political positions on things. And I think it's always good for us to hear from, from uh, uh, public servants. Thank you. And now up to uh, Dr. Robeck. Dr. Robeck, does this ever come up at Fuller? Uh, at Fuller, no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, it, and the reason it doesn't is because we don't have external commencement speakers. Our president mm. is the one who gives the commencement address, and at baccalaureate, it's always a faculty member who gives the address. So, no, I don't want to say we've no. avoided the issue, but I, I would yeah. say that uh, it's less of an issue for us. Mm. But yes. I have lots of friends, uh, like Carl, who are in other uh, colleges and universities, and who are concerned about these kinds of things. Um, I think, you know, part of our problem in the U.S. is that, you know, I would say back at least as early as the Vietnam War, probably earlier than that, uh, I think we have lost our ability to be civilized to, to one another. And I think mm. that sometimes people take advantage of that. And, I, yeah. and you know, I think not only of politicians who uh, are brought in to, uh, to uh, uh, give a new uh, slant on things, but actors and actresses who seem to have abundance of, of opinions about everything and are not professional in anything other than perhaps their acting. Uh, it, I mean, it seems to me that uh, that uh, uh, seminaries, uh, which a, a seminary is a seedbed for new ideas, uh, it, it's it's a place where you do develop critical thinking and you are open to explore a variety of, of uh, ideas and positions. but. Commencement is, I think, the most significant thing that any school has to offer because it really does sum up the four years or three years or whatever number of years it is that a student has been there. And it is a place to encourage them and challenge them for the future. And right. challenges do require sometimes to be, uh, in a sense, uh, different from what we expect or what we particularly want. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, they can be done in a way that that is civilized. And I'm afraid that we've lost our civility. We've lost our ability to to uh, uh, disagree with one another on a, on a uh, an even keel, uh, and to allow the other person to express his or her own opinion. Uh, we don't have to buy everything that they say, but I do think that we have to listen and then put that into the mix and say, where does this fit in the whole, or does it at all? All right, thank you. Uh, across from you is Bishop Olson, and thank you. We're glad to have you back here today. Thank you. And I know there are a number of Catholic universities around the world. Has this ever come up for? Uh, or, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite, a bit, quite a bit. Nothing, uh, fortunately, that I've had to be directly involved Well, in. all right. But I, uh, I, I think a couple of things just uh, come to mind. It's a very good conversation. Um, a commencement exercise is precisely that a commencement of the university and so it's really an academic endeavor all right and and i think we've lost some of that focus and in part uh because of the influence of advancement offices and i think universities have somewhat brought this on themselves by trying to get publicity or um uh sort of uh, attention by whom they're inviting. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and then precisely the controversy engenders news, and so the university's in the news, and it's sort of a promotion of somehow at least activity, uh, and so the commencement address becomes a subordinate tool or device for advancement purposes. And instead of really an academic exercise. Um, and I think that that combines with uh, uh, the marketability of education where it's very pragmatic instead of some of the more higher endeavors that education uh, is called to be about as well. And I think that may be another aspect as to why these things are invited, disinvited. I think uh, you can have a controversial speaker come in uh, who's had controversial opinions, but if the project is an, is an academic exercise and that's the expectation, it can be presented in a way that's not going to draw necessary attention. So some of our universities invite in order to disinvite, in order to... I wouldn't to, say, I, that's well, kind of maybe. a cynical approach <laughs> well, to it. I mean, I was I mean, wondering. That's, like, I mean that's, that's, that, that's one possible mm. next step you mm. could take, but I wasn't sort of All right. fostering that. But well, no. thank you. Thank you very much. And next to you, welcome back, Canon Peterson. Your position on this matter, please. Thank you. I found Othel's uh, distinction that he made in relationship to convent, uh, a uh, commencement ad address in contrast to a seminar or colloquium conversation to be a very important one that I think needs to certainly be kept in mind. The moderator's statement here, however, is applying that this what is happening on college and university campuses today is a new phenomenon. Well. Uh, in our nation, but I certainly remember Vietnam, and for those of mm. us around the table old enough uh, uh, to remember that, certainly in the, the uh, 60s and 70s, this was not a, a um, what is happening now is not a new phenomenon for all of our campuses who are very much alive uh, with controversy centering around who is coming to give commencement and speakers. For that matter, I actually went on the um, internet to try to find out how many people had been disinvited <laughs> during that time and who they were, but either my skills on the computer are lacking so greatly that I couldn't find it, but certainly I remember myself in uh, and the universities in which I attended at that time, uh, people being disinvited or uh, strong feelings in relationship to um, commencement speakers. I did go on the internet, however, and uh, to look at schools this year who have disinvited in, in 2014. And one of the things, and Michael will certainly appreciate this, uh, uh, one of the issues, uh, well, we might not appreciate it actually at all, uh, but. Uh, for Roman Catholic schools mm. uh, to make sure that not to bring up the issues of abortion, for example, mm. and uh, people who had were uh, holding that type of position were certainly not invited uh, a after much discussion actually took place at some of the different universities about the possibility of doing that. Uh, Secretary, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. Um, uh, canceled her invitation to speak at Rutgers uh, because there became a uh, real debate between the students and the faculty. The students wanted her, uh, feeling that it was a point of expression, but the faculty, some faculty members at Rutgers didn't, and consequently she just simply uh, pulled out. Brandeis University uh, was in the center of the news because of wanting to invite an uh, anti-Islamic activist. So I, the issue here, of course, it, it can be brought down to strains of con, uh, censorship or whatever. Um, but I think here that certainly uh, Othel has given us a opportunity to be able to think about this in a different context of what uh, commencement speakers should be all about. All right, thank you very much. Um, Bishop, did you want to respond? I know you were addressed there for a moment, and we do like to give you an opportunity if you, if you need to. Well, no, I, uh, just in particular that I think that's part of the uh, uh, endeavor of, of of what a university should be about. I mean, uh, certainly, you know, it, it's uh, the questions are called to account if uh, a university invites a speaker, you know, who's fundamentally at odds with with a, a foundational philosophy behind particular education and that. But I, I, I mean, again, some of this is also engendered precisely in the media and uh, uh, to promote. I, I think commencement speakers have a responsibility also to focus their speech on educational points of view and articulating that instead of just simply sound bites. Ah, all right, thank you. And then Othel, please. We uh, just have a few uh, seconds in this segment. Well, 
I, I think the, the thing that is disturbing me about commencements, and Carl can verify this to some extent, is the disorder that seems to be occurring, uh, the loudness, the, you, know, you can't hardly hear the names being called and that type of thing. So I think the commencement itself needs to be looked at as mm -hmm. to what, what is the future of this time-honored tradition, mm -hmm. whether or not it really is serving these original purposes. Having some of these exercises in stadiums and larger arenas probably doesn't lend well to a more reverent, shall we say, respectful atmosphere, but yet that's, that's what a university has to do these days with classes as large as they are. I'm afraid we're out of time for this segment, but uh, we do have an important announcement that Mark would like to make at this time. Stand by. We'll be back for our closing statements in just a moment. Thank you, Pastor Lutz. We hope you are enjoying today's program. If you would like to learn more about the American Religious Town Hall, please visit our website at AmericanReligious.org. That's AmericanReligious.org. There you can read about the mission and history of the program, learn about the Town Hall Estates, and view past programs by clicking the appropriate menu buttons. Each week, Pastor Lutz looks forward to receiving your letters. You may write to him at the address shown on your screen. Send your letters to Pastor Jerry Lutz, American Religious Town Hall Meeting, P.O. Box 180118, Dallas, Texas 75218. That's Pastor Jerry Lutz, American Religious Town Hall Meeting, P.O. Box 180118, Dallas, Texas 75218. Thank you for writing and thank you for watching. And now, back to you, Pastor Lutz, and today's closing statements. Thank you, Mark, and welcome back. And by the way, we read your mail. I know sometimes it might not seem like we do, but I, I certainly do. And there are many topics we discuss here in this program that come directly from your suggestions. So please continue to let us know what you'd like to hear discussed on this program. Now let's go to our summary statements. And for that, let's return to Bishop Olson. Please, your closing remarks. A commencement address. Uh, requires responsibility on the parts of the people who invite the speaker and the speaker themselves as well as to what is its educational purpose, what is its educational focus, and is it just simply a tool or a device to promote the university for advertising purposes. If a uni I, I wouldn't say a university risks becoming an island of intolerance because an island seems somehow it's separated from the rest of society and I think it reflects most of the intolerance that's in our larger community today. All right, thank you very much. Next to you, Kenneth Peterson, your summary. Well, I believe that certainly disinviting carries a strain of censorship implying that the college graduates uh, should not have to endure uh, points of view that are maybe contradictory to their own or at least contradictory to the university itself. And I suspect at that point you have to simply ask the question, well, what is the purpose of education if uh, we are making a censorship or not allowing a particular point of view, if you agree with it or if you don't agree with it, uh, being uh, a part of a commencement speaker, therefore rejecting uh, it's simply different points of view. What well, is education today? Thank you very much. Now, Ophel Lakey, Bishop thank you, Lakey. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Rigorous debate, critique, engagement of different ideas is the heart and soul of higher education of universities. And yet, that commencement ought to reflect the deeper values, the deeper hopes, and stay away from those uh, things that would, at that high moment in the life of the university, would divide, detract, and cause dissension. All right. Thank you now. And Dr. Troval? Well, everything's been said, but not everyone said it yet. So, uh, the, <laughs> But I do believe the, the commencement speech uh, is meant to embody the deepest uh, values and mission of the university, and it's meant to unify I do hope that all the students and faculty who have sat through, I, you know, I've sat through 30 plus, maybe more commencement speeches. Some of them have been terrible and some of them have been <laughs> inspiring. Um, but you just, some of us, I think, need to have the humility and tolerance to listen to what someone has to say and to ask, what does it mean for me in my life and where I'm going as I commence on my life? All right, thank you very much. And now Dr. Beach. I think that uh, university and college administrators, uh, presidents, uh, leaders that really decide on the, the commencement to speaker should be very careful and do this with a thought 
and not just thinking, well, who I can get a name of somebody who is well known or something. Because to disinvite somebody once you've invited, to me, is almost like saying the president should perhaps maybe give his uh, resignation. Uh, and if he's not able to even to choose the right person for commencement, it's, uh, he's, he's failing in his duties or her duties as leader of the institution. So I think it should be done carefully and uh, not politically. And uh, in a way, it's, it's, it's a teaching occasion, yes, but it's more an inspiring occasion to, to kind of give the young people as they launch out uh, some push to be able to be successful in life. All right, thank you. Dr. Robeck, your summation, please. Uh, yeah, uh, as I think about this, I, I sometimes wonder whether we need to push it back another step. In other words, I think that from the Department of Education these days in, here in the U.S., that there's an enormous attempt to homogenize all education so that everybody is essentially teaching the same thing in the same way. And we don't always agree with policies that the government has set for us in terms of how we are to teach certain things or what we are to teach in the classroom. But it is a huge problem, and I think it's a big problem on all college and university campuses and on seminary campuses as well. So I think, you know, going back there to the homogenization idea, that, that, that there is a tendency also to have... Uh, uh, administration uh, think of people in terms of consumer. Uh, everybody is a consumer these days and this is what they want and therefore this is what we are going to give them. Or uh, there is the, the tendency in a few cases, I think even today, to, to provide for controversy. Again, it's a consumer issue because it provides sound bites. It provides uh, ammunition for uh, offices of advancement, uh, you know, to, to kind of sell our institution on the basis of these kinds of uh, words or these kinds of promises or these kinds of statements, and uh, it will attract or it will repel certain kinds of people. So I think we're in a, in a day where we really need to be much more open to listening and uh, evaluating and critical thinking on our own as we look at the way these things are done in our colleges and universities. All right, thank you very much. Good counsel, good advice, great discussion. Appreciate your involvement here today. Look forward to being with you again and look forward to having you come back to another edition. Invite your friends next time, particularly those who perhaps are not familiar with this program. I think they're going to like what they see just as you are. Now, the Charter of the American Religious Town Hall provides that Roman Catholics, Protestants, Jews, educators, and others may appear on this program and can declare their beliefs without hesitancy. And the rest of the members of the panel will uphold and guarantee that American right to all who will appear, irrespective of race or creed, so that the rest of the world can see that here in America, we believe in civil and religious freedom, not only in theory, but in reality. And now, friends, until next week, at the same time and over the very same channel, the American Religious Town Hall meeting stands adjourned. And may the God of all of us bless all of you.